Hey gang, once again, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Uh, once again, it's, uh, it's great to have you with us today. Once again, we are worshiping here in the sanctuary apart from you. Please know that my thoughts and my prayers continue to be with you, continue to be with everyone in our community. We have truly been blessed thus far in this community because uh, the COVID-19 virus has uh, escaped coming to our doors. And we are so happy. We are uh, thanking God for that. Uh, we thank you because it's been through the work that you have been doing uh, that, has, uh, that has kept this community safe. And we thank all of our first responders. We thank all of those working in our hospital and our nursing home and our assisted living um, everywhere else, all the folks uptown, um, whether it be at the grocery store or whether it be at the gas station, um, we thank you all for the work that you are doing. Please keep it up um, and keep safe. An announcement for you, um, as we videotape this, it's Wednesday afternoon. Um, later on today, um, Minnesota Governor Waltz is going to uh, share um, another segment as to uh, our gradual opening of the state. As of this point, we do not know what that is and how that's going to affect uh, the, the opportunity for us to um, ease up and be able to start worshiping again. As you remember, our church council has talked long and hard about this and has made the decision that at least um, until June, uh, we are going to be worshiping this way as we are today. That means that next Sunday will also be via video and, and through YouTube and through our website. And then uh, dependent upon what Governor Waltz has uh, declared, uh, maybe we can go one step further. Please know that you folks are going to be the first people that will hear about that. One of the ways to do that we're going to do that is we're going to hold off for a little bit with respect to our June newsletter. Um, we're hopefully going to be able to uh, send it um, right around June 1st, and by doing so, hopefully we will have a better idea as to what we can and what we cannot do at that time. But please look for that. Um, you'll hear also information from us uh, via uh, messages, via letters, via social media. Um, so uh, just keep, uh, keep us in your thoughts and in your prayers up until that time. Um, thank you. Jesus loves me This I know
We begin our worship this morning with a brief order of confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please take a moment at this time for silent prayer and for self-examination. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hey kids, welcome and good morning as we gather together for another Kid Talk here at a once again almost empty Christ Lutheran Church Sanctuary. Uh, Paul is up there on top again, so, so I'm not, hello he says, so I'm totally not alone. And of course, I got my friends behind, huh. hold on. What are you guys looking at? I don't see anything. What are you looking at? Are you going to tell me? Oh, okay. Hey, gang. <clears throat> As you can see, they are looking at something over there. And it's kind of like they're frozen in time. And they're not telling me what they're looking at. But they did say that you'd know by the end of my sermon. So I guess what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to kind of wait and together, try to figure out what in the world are they looking at? It's a mystery. So we'll see how well you do as you listen to the gospel text, as you listen to everything else, to see if you can be the detective, if you put on your detective hat, that can figure out what they're looking at. We'll find out in a short period of time, all right? In the meantime... You guys and gals have a great day. Once again, my prayers are with you. Once again, I can't wait till you're here again. Um, have a great day. God bless. This Sunday is the seventh Sunday of Easter, or after Easter. Uh, however, uh, that's not going to be my message for you this week. In fact, it was going to be the message until last night when I started thinking that, you know, perhaps I'm going to do it on something else. Uh, 
Tomorrow in our church here is a special day. Tomorrow is Ascension Day. Tomorrow is the day that we remember that we celebrate the fact that Jesus left his earthly home with us to ascend into heaven, to be seated at the right hand of the Father. So our gospel text for this, the Ascension Day, is going to come to us from the gospel according to St. Luke. Um, it is going to come from St. Luke, the 24th chapter, and beginning with actually verse 44, but I'm going to begin just a little bit before that. So actually, I'm going to begin with Luke 24, beginning at verse 36, and it reads as follows in Jesus' name. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them. And he said to them, Peace be with you. And they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it, and he ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple. Blessing God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Amen. Friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A professor of mine at seminary, Mark Thronweit, wrote one time that he hated, and he actually used the word hated, he hated having to preach on texts such as the Ascension text. Because he said, how in the world do you truly understand it? How does it truly happen and how do you truly comprehend the fact that Jesus was dead, was placed in a tomb, buried, then rose again, returned in flesh, but then all of a sudden departed and was taken up into heaven right in front of the disciples' eyes. He said, how do you figure that out? 
If you remember from the last few texts that we talked about, we talked about the fact that Jesus in Luke's gospel, after appearing to the women at the tomb, made his first appearance to two of the disciples, two of the followers who were walking home after that third day to a village called Emmaus. You remember that text. You remember the conversations that they were having and suddenly Jesus in their midst and the conversations that Jesus had with the two of them. That ended as they sat at an inn and Jesus broke bread with them. And after breaking bread, suddenly he disappeared from their midst. They were so excited, even though they were almost back home, almost to the village, they got up, and Scripture says they ran back to Jerusalem, where they found the disciples. And they began telling the disciples about what they had seen and heard that the Messiah, the Lord, had been walking and talking with them. As they shared these words with the disciples, the disciples shared with them that, yes, some of our own women had been at the tomb, and they said the same thing, that the tomb was empty, that Jesus had apparently risen. And then our gospel text clicks in. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said, Peace be with you. They were startled. They were terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. No kidding. My guess is that they were frightened beyond belief. I'm sure the door was shut. And all of a sudden, there is, they think, their Lord standing there. Jesus tells them to not be afraid and to believe. And in fact, he goes one step further. He says, if you want to, you can touch my hands. You can touch my feet. You can feel me to see that I am not a ghost that I'm flesh and blood. And then he does something that some have said, boy, that's kind of weird. But when you stop to think about it, it is not weird at all. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, if you have anything to eat, you got a snack around here or anything like that? Well, one of the disciples, I guess, looked around and saw this old broiled piece of fish that he probably left there because they had overcooked it and it was not very good. <laughs> they handed it to Jesus. What did he do? He chowed down. A ghost doesn't eat food. Jesus wanted to show them in the most natural way there could be that I am alive, and not only am I alive, I'm hungry, and I want something to eat, and so he did. And then he began to teach them. He taught them some amazing things. He taught them that the resurrection was real. That it was not made up. It was as it happened. He talked about the fact that the cross was essential. That there had to have been the Good Friday. There had to have been Jesus dying on the cross. 
because that it has been said so many times if it were not for Good Friday there would never have been an Easter morning the resurrection was real the cross was real it was necessary it was essential to God's plan and that the task ahead would be equally demanding they could not stay in that upper room anymore now I'm sure there were some of his disciples there that were thinking about the same lines as when three of them were up with Jesus in the mountaintop and he transfigured before them and he became gleaming white as clothes remember Peter's great line geez Lord it'd be great if we stuck it out here with you let's build three tents I bet they would have stayed forever in the upper room but Jesus couldn't let them do that Martin Luther wrote a lot about his days in the monastic order of the Black Friars he wrote about the fact that more than anything else what the monastery was good at was hiding people keeping them from the reality of the real world keeping them cloistered keeping them sheltered so they didn't have to go out into the world but Luther said that's not the way that God wants us to be God wants us out in this world God needs us out in this world we have to be there we have to go out he needed to kick them out of the upper room and there was only one way to do it he told them to go with him he walked them out to the outskirts of Bethany and there there as he was talking to them as they were gathered around him suddenly he began to be lifted up and he ascended into heaven apart from them to be seated at the right hand of God at that site of the ascension a couple of things happened there was an ending you bet there was an ending no longer would the disciples have a Jesus in the flesh with them next to them but Jesus shared with them even though I am going away I am going to send the comforter remember him the Holy Spirit who will be with you but you because you are witnesses you are going to be given a very special task he said for you there will be a great power that will be bestowed to you you're gonna to have to wait for it a little while and you're gonna to have to go back to Jerusalem to do it but wait here for the father will send it I'm gonna halt right now because I want to figure out what this gang is looking at okay I think I got it back in 1989 there was a series cartoon series 
called The Adventures of Winnie the Pooh and Friends. And in 1989, there was an episode that was called Newfound Friends. It was over 30 years ago, but I still remember the story. It was a story that concerned Rabbit as kind of one of the leads. And about on this snowy, blowy, wintry day, Rabbit outside as he was trying to put a scarf and earmuffs around one of his carrots that was freezing in the ground, heard this call for help from this little bird in her nest flying around with all of, uh, all of the snow and the wind and everything else. Well, Rabbit and Winnie the Pooh and Eeyore and Piglet and the whole group started chasing and finally, finally, corral this little bird. It was a little bluebird by the name of Cassie. Now, Rabbit didn't know what to do with this little bird. In fact, Rabbit had no idea of how to care for this bird. And so Rabbit did what Rabbit was good at every now and then, pawning it off on somebody else. Rabbit gave it to Winnie the Pooh and the Piglet and the Tigger saying, you guys take care of it. I don't know how. And so they tried to take care of little Kessie. But they kind of blew it. They couldn't even give her a bath right without making so many soap suds that it almost turned the entire 100-acre woods into a soap snow plot. Rabbit said, you guys are hopeless. You can't do it. I'll do it. And then the rest of the story talks about how Kessie became friends not only with Rabbit, but with all of the characters of the 100-acre woods. How she taught them how to love one another just a little bit more. How to be friends with everybody. Everybody. And how to treat each and every day like an absolute joy. Well, one day came. And it was time for little Kessie to fly away, to leave the nest, I guess the way you'd put it in nature's terms. None of the inhabitants of the Hundred Acre Woods wanted Kessie to leave. They had all fallen in love with her. But she told each and every one of them that she'd be coming back and to not be sad, but to be happy, and to be glad, and to be ready for that day. That day came, and with the inhabitants of the Hundred Acre Woods watching, little Kessie got ready got her wings ready to go, started flapping, and flew away. They all watched as she got smaller and smaller and then was out of sight. Now you'd think that they were so sad that they would just drop down to the ground in tears. But there's not a single one of them who's crying this morning. They're happy, and the reason they are is because they know of the promise where she was going to come back to them. As our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ ascended into heaven, 
there was not sadness among the disciples, men and women who were watching as he rose. They were happy. They were glad. They went back to Jerusalem where they waited with joy on their faces for the power that was coming that would be given to them by God. We give thanks for ascension, for our Lord and Savior going up to be with the Father, for leaving with us the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, and for the power of God that would come down on a day called Pentecost. More about that next week. Amen. At this time, I would ask, if you can, wherever you are, to please rise, as together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we will accept our offering, and in lieu of that, you'll hear some words about offering that Paul will put in front of you. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
on this ascension day, receive the blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Worship is ended. Go in peace.